Hello, and happy Earth Day. My name is Steve Allison, and I'm a professor of ecology and evolutionary biology at UC Irvine. My research covers climate change, and I also teach classes on ecosystem ecology and microbial ecology. But today I wanted to talk to you about climate change and native plants in California. And that's because I've spent a lot of time converting my own yard from turf grass into native vegetation which is a lot better for the environment and helps to conserve water, as well as provides great habitat for other plants and animals. One of our concerns about climate change, particularly in California, is that it's going to get hotter as well as drier. So one of the things that you can do is consider drought tolerant vegetation, which can then reduce the need for excess water. And what I wanna do now is show you some of my favorite plants that are California natives and drought tolerant. Why don't we start with this one right here. This is called Bees Bliss Sage. And like many sages, it's very aromatic. So if you break off a leaf, smell it. It smells like the sage you cook with. It makes a nice ground cover. Over here, we have a nice selection of annual wildflowers. This plant here is called Blue-Eyed Grass. These annual wildflowers bloom just after the winter rains are finished, and then they die back and set seed and come back once a year. So they actually avoid the long summer drought here in California. And this beautiful plant here is called Dudleya, and it's often known for growing on cliff sides and sticking out of crevices between rocks. Right above it, we have the lemonade berry. The lemonade berry is really interesting because you can actually pick these berries and they're covered in a sticky substance that you can actually use to make tea that tastes a lot like lemonade. Over here we have deer grass. You can see it's a beautiful plant that has these nice long grass flowering stalks. Native Americans actually used these flowering stalks to make baskets. And some of the wildflowers here include the California poppy, that really nice orange flower, which is our state flower. Now, many of these plants make great habitat for birds, insects. So you can see, for example, this is the California sunflower, which is a great attractant for native pollinators. And behind that, we have these parkia wildflowers, where I just saw a bee buzzing around. And over here, we have the Galvezia bush, and it has these really nice red trumpet shaped flowers. And these are great for hummingbirds. So, hummingbirds would just come along and stick their beaks right into these flowers to get nectar. And over here in this corner, we have a really nice plant uh, called the gooseberry. And the gooseberry is another great one for wildlife because it's producing these tasty berries that are nice for birds to eat. And next to that also the bladder pod, which is shown here and it has a nice yellow flower, which is great for pollinators, birds and bees. Now some of the plants back here are more riparian plants, plants that live along rivers or under the canopy in a forest. So for example, we have these uh, woodland strawberries and they're just flowering now, now is a uh, strawberry season. And these actually are very tasty. You can pick them and eat them. And one of my favorites for the backyard is the uh, dogwood. This beautiful reddish colored bark. And uh, it's even starting to put out some flowers you can see here at this time of year. And finally, this is California. So there's a native grape that can grow really well in our climate. It's just starting to leaf out this time of year. And by the end of the year, we'll cover up this entire fence with its nice foliage. I hope that meeting some of these wonderful plants will inspire you to go out and do your part to address climate change and adapt to our oncoming droughts by planting some native vegetation of your own in your own backyard or front yard.